and uh, I have to say, I've got Jesus. You know, they're right. It's not the old Rob Gardner. If anyone's in Christ, he's a brand new person. Brand new. Christ's blood washed me clean, mm -hmm. and I'm so thankful. Mm. And uh, one of the things I, I, I feel called to do is to tell people that are sitting out there in the church, mm. they're sitting on those pews, mm -hmm. there's many that are just like I was. I'm afraid you're right. They just don't know it. Yeah. I just, I pray that this show and every chance I get mm -hmm. to get in front of people and say, look, you can, you know, it, you can do it. All you got to do is turn your life over to Christ. No, everything's not going to be perfect. Mm -mm. It's far from that. But, uh, boy, you have, a, you have somebody that will just hold you. And, Absolutely. And, and He'll keep you on top of the circumstances. He keeps you moving, yeah. You got on a different looking kind of vest. I do. What's that all about? Well, uh, regressing just a little bit. Back mm -hmm. in the 90s, I rode with a motorcycle. Um, um, I rode motorcycles for 40 years, off and on. Mm -hmm. uh, back in the 90s, I, um, I started riding with a group called the Christian Motorcycle Association. Not because I was a Christian, but because, hey, this is a good group of guys mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and gals. Mm -hmm. And I just felt comfort in being riding with them, being with them. And God was preparing me. It was part of that yep. preparation of where he's moved me to now. But uh, on, off and on, I rode, uh, I, I rode with them and uh, experienced some good, good times and, some, and made some good friends. And um, then uh, I sort of got in and out of bikes for a while. Life stepped in, money tight, mm -hmm. bike goes. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, uh, about, I guess it's been about four years ago, before I accepted Christ, I got another bike. I hadn't had one in a while. Mm -hmm. I started riding, and I still had my membership with CMA. And I got back, um, or maybe that was five years ago, actually, um, I started riding some with CMA and got involved in the local chapter. And Well, uh, about two years ago, God put it on my heart that he wanted me to do something else. And little did I know it was uh, uh, moving into a group called Bikers for Christ. Mm. It's based out of uh, California. Um, pastor Z is the founding pastor. And... Um, I would try to say his last name, but I would blow mm -hmm. it all over. Mm -hmm. So he, everybody knows who I'm talking about when I say uh, Pastor Fred Z mm -hmm. uh, uh, started Bikers for Christ back in the 90s. And we're an international biker ministry that mainly goes out into the biker community and shares the gospel. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's just an awesome thing to, to, to witness these big burly bikers, mm -hmm. like my, unlike myself, or like myself, and uh, uh, they uh, they hear the gospel for the first time, or or they accept Christ, mm -hmm. or or you just plant the seed. Where's the place where the big bike rally out uh, out west? Where's uh, that? Sturgis, South yeah, Dakota. Yeah, Sturgis. Uh, have you been there? Have not. Um, I was uh, invited to go last year. And uh, didn't make the trip, mm -hmm. um, but uh, I'm I'm praying about it right now to see whether this uh, it, it it comes up in August, uh, the first mm -hmm. week of August. I'm praying about it um, and trying to decide whether God wants me there or somewhere else. Yeah, well, let's regress a little bit, okay. uh, Rob. T uh, I, I think I inter interrupted you, but uh, and you said you, God used your daughter, but. What, how did, what, what do you do to bring you to that place where you got on your knees that, that, that morning okay. at your house? At your well, home? my daughter uh, was, was born a preemie, and she was a miracle child. And uh, God has blessed her in all along her life, and she, she's been like on a mission. Mm. Uh, she, I can't say any. She's just God-driven. Mm -hmm. And uh, watching her grow up in the situation she was in with 
with me drinking and mm -hmm. not being the daddy I should have been and seeing what God was doing in her life. And then I realized, you know, something's, I'm missing something. Mm -hmm. And um, she now, talked you, to me. And we, were you professing to be a Christian all that time? Yeah. Okay, I, I thought, okay, I, you know, I, 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 So she talked to you? But, yeah, and we, we talked, and she just, uh, uh, she sort of told me, you know, you're not saved. Mm. And then I started trying to figure out what that was all about. Uh -huh. And um, it's, it was amazing that uh, after reading, talking to people, realizing that I wasn't saved, mm. if I had died all those years, mm -hmm. I'd have gone straight to hell. Yeah, I would have too. And uh, God has a plan. I don't know what it is, but I do know that I want to be where he wants me to be. And we can trust him to keep us where he wants us to be. Uh, somebody said, what do you think God's going to be doing in your life next year or 10 years? You know, I don't know. And it's not, it really, it's not any of my business, yeah. is it? What's God going to do in your life tomorrow? I don't know. But it's none of our business, is it? No. Our, our business is to trust and obey him today. That's right. Walk in obedience to him today. And obedience is nothing more than just faith and action. As you say you believe and you don't obey, God says you don't, you don't believe at all. So faith is nothing more than just, uh, it, it's obedience, it's faith in action. Do you know him? Do you really know him? Do you obey him? Do you really believe him? Vance Habner has gone on to be with Jesus now, but he, he was summing up the book of James, and he says, people do what they believe, and all the rest is just religious talk. There's a lot of religious talk going on among the Christian community these days, isn't there? Yeah, there is. I'm, uh, this, we just need, we need to preach Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not anything else. I mean, there are so many people that I've got so many friends that are just lost. Mm -hmm. um, Some I of them have, probably in church too, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're, they're, mm -hmm. they're, uh, um, most of them mm -hmm. are, are church-going uh, people. They've, uh, I don't want to ever be, to be accused of judging anybody either, but you can also see a tree, see the fruit of a tree, mm -hmm. and you know what, mm -hmm. you, you see what they're doing and where they're going and, and, and what, you know, and you know they're fr by their fruit that they're just not living Rob, Christ like let, let me make a comment on something you just said. Okay. Um, because uh, zealous Christians get accused of this all the time. Well, who are you to judge? Yeah. And you talk about somebody that's lost and, and you're concerned for them. And they will not, now, who are you to judge? Yeah. Now, listen, if I assume that that person is saved, am I not judging also? Yeah. I am. You are. Yeah. I'm judging. I'm, I'm, I'm making a judgment. Yeah. If I assume he's saved and never say anything to him, um, then I'm, I'm making a judgment. If I assume he's lost and say something to him, I, listen, I'd a whole lot rather assume a person is lost and talk to him about Jesus right. uh, and find out that he's saved than assume a person is saved and never say anything to him about, it, about the Lord and, and, and he ends up going to hell. That's right. That's uh, so y y you're going to have to assume one way or the other. Right. And so I'm just going to assume the people I meet are lost until, uh, until they... T and witness to them, and if they're saved, then we're going to have fellowship together. Hey, amen. And if they're not saved, yeah. then they're going to they're going to get saved or 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 leave one or the other. 